Ladies and gentlemen, you will have noticed that uh, Dr. Amit uh, Maideo is on the program, but he is not here in person. He is at the Baldota Institute of Digestive Sciences in Mumbai. And Dr. Maideo is uh, a pioneer in interventional endoscopy. He was trained at the University Hospital in Hamburg under Professor Zohendra, and now he runs a very famous institute in India, which is also a world famous teaching center for endoscopy. His focus in endoscopy is especially the pancreatic biliary tract, and uh, I think we will switch now to India. I bring you very warm greetings uh, from the Baldota Institute of Digestive Sciences from the Global Hospital of Mumbai. And uh, standing beside me is my entire team, where we have uh, a consultant gastroenterologists, we have got fellows in advanced endoscopy, and uh, fellows in gastroenterology, and of course my anesthesiologist who's standing behind me. So now I come to the uh, patient, and this is a 50-year-old person who has got a four centimeter lesion in the head of the pancreas, and with a borderline risk stability, because they have shown that a lesion is abutting against the superior mesenteric artery. The biopsy has been proven to be adenocarcinoma, and uh, this patient has been referred to us for a biliary stenting. Uh, as all of us sitting there are probably experts in ERCP, I've already passed the duodenoscope inside the duodenum and you see the ampulla of waiter in view. Uh, just a few steps, basic steps for cannulation is uh, we bring the ampulla of waiter somewhere at 11 o'clock in the field so that when our sphincterotome goes out, if you see the sphincterotome is going towards the axis of the bile duct. Uh, so the cannulation towards the bile duct, so this is the axis which has to be maintained from right to the left from below upwards. Whereas cannulating the pancreatic duct, we go from above downwards, from le left to right. So I'm cannulating the bile duct, turning the small wheel to the right. Now my assistant is gonna show you how we may take the help of this easily rotatable glide wire. So this is the Terumo wire, uh, 032. And so I usually do a wire guided cannulation. So go inside. And then I'm bending the sphincterotome a bit, and now I turn the small wheel to the right to bring the sphincterotome towards the axis of the CBD. And once this is the case, my assistant is now rotating the wire. So, so I'm going to again come here, bend the sphincterotome. Yes, and now my assistant will rotate the wire. Don't bend too much. Okay, now see. It's going in the PD. Okay. So once more, I will change the axis. Yes. Yes, go on. Till the pancreatic duct. Okay, so now unbend the sphincterotome. Let me see. As you know, uh, in case the wire goes again and again in the PD, then I need to do some changes in the axis or sometimes then we resort to a pre-cut sphincterotomy. But I don't want to show you that. Uh, so we again go in. I'm turning the small wheel to the right. Don't bend too much. I'm pulling the scope shaft a little back so that the axis goes more towards the bile duct. Bend it really in the sphincterotome. Okay. So, so Amit, you will persist yes. with the wire-guided technique. Uh, when do you uh, think about injecting just a little bit of contrast for a roadmap, or do you ever uh, do that? Yes, uh, that's a good question. In case the wire does not go in, and want to see the upper end of the bile duct, the S-shaped lower end of the duct, that means I uh, inject a little bit of contrast just to see uh, where it is going. And then, as you see here, a little bit manipulation of my body, left and right movement. We go along the roof of the ampulla waiter, and you see that the wire has gone parallel to the in contrast. No, we that the bile can the wing foam over 
the wire and after putting the sphincterotome high up, then we start injecting contrast from above downwards. So I'm pushing the contrast, I'm pulling the sphincterotome down and as you see that there is a dilated segment of the bile duct. I keep on pulling it down, keep on pulling it down and we start seeing the stricture. Um, this patient has already been diagnosed uh, with an adenocarcinoma on EUS, so I don't need to take any breast cytology, though in this case, because it is a CA head pancreas, the chances that breast cytology will be positive are quite low, because this is more like an extrinsic infiltration. So you can see the lower portion of the CBD, and there is a stricture in the middle, so I leave the guide wire inside now. And then uh, once again, uh, we do a small sphincterotomy so that we can go in and place uh, expandable metallic stent. Uh, so, uh, the sphincterotomy, there's nothing new in the technique of sphincterotomy. The most important thing is to cut it uh, millimeter by millimeter, step by step, so, so as to prevent any chances of uh, bleeding or a zipper cut. Now, for expandable stent, we don't need to do a very large sphincterotomy. So this much sphincterotomy is enough. And uh, I'm pushing the wire inside and slowly pulling the sphincterotome out. Now you see that I'm using this uh, Metro Tracer wire, which is a, actually a exchange wire. For initial cannulation, I use the Terumo, which can be rotated very easily. And uh, over this, I'm going to place the evolution stent uh, from Cook. And so here you can see this is a six centimeter fully covered evolution stent. And this patient is probably going to get pro completely evaluated by the surgeon again. And uh, they are likely to attempt a Whipple's procedure. Uh, the only thing is that if they find that it is inoperable on the operation table, then the stenting is going to serve as a permanent palliation. So Amit, you see here, this is the, yes, Rob. Amit, the, uh, the Terumo wire that you used, it's so uh, torqueable, it's the short uh, Terumo, correct? Yes, yes. It and is that's why you have to change to another wire for, uh, for the exchange and for the stenting. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Sometimes uh, uh, we also can place uh, stents on the Terumo itself because we use the technique of uh, water irrigation or saline irrigation so that the wire does not uh, come out. You have to pull the wire. And as the wire is being pulled, I'm passing the stent inside. The assembly is very rigid, but it's a very nice assembly to go across uh, tight strictures. So you see here that this is the place where the stricture is quite tight. So I'm going to take the scope in the hand. Pull the wire. Okay. So I'm turning the scope a bit. And now you see that the stent has gone inside. So I'm passing it a little more deep. So how close to the hilum can you get, Amit? Uh, if this patient potentially would go to surgery, uh, yes. can you do you have to stay a certain distance from the hilum uh, for the surgeon? Yes at least about two centimeters uh, below the hilum. That should be sufficient for the surgeon for doing an anastomosis. Uh, uh, Rob, fortunately, I'm myself a surgeon, so uh, I've done these surgeries before I gave up surgery completely. And uh, uh, so uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start deploying the stent. Okay, I'm going to push it a little bit more and I'm going to pull it down. Okay, I'm going to pull it down, pull it down, yes little more down yes little more down you see that the stent on x-ray if you see the x-ray and you can see the the markers on the fluoroscopy okay start deploying is it deploying above yes it doesn't look like it's fully opened on the top uh, is there a yes. reason for that uh, Amin? 
Oh no, I can't tell you the reason here. Yeah. Probably it is uh, something related to the stent itself. Let us uh, let us see what is the problem. If that is the case, I will just go inside with a balloon. Yeah. yeah. I'll go in with a balloon uh, and try to dilate it a bit. Uh, normally, this uh, stent has got a very good ax axial strength, uh, the evolution stent, and it should open up like a flower. And uh, the part of the stent which is inside the dilated portion of the bile duct, uh, there's sufficient amount of stent there, so it should have opened up like a flower. It uh, looks so like I'm it's going opening up now. Quickly, oh yep. yes. Take a hurricane balloon and uh, dilate that area a bit. Uh, so. As you see here, Rob, that there are at least two, three centimeters below the hilum, the stent. So that oh. area is sufficient for. So it's a beautiful, dissection. beautiful uh, cannulation and stent deployment, uh, Amit.